A couple of years ago, one of our priests offered the Holy Masses at 9 a.m. and noon one Sunday morning in Mineola as a thanks to our parish for supporting him in his path to priesthood. He had been ordained earlier that year by Bishop Strickland. Father made a couple of statements in his homilies that I needed to clarify the following week. One is that he said that, and I'm quoting him, the church must make it easier for couples to obtain annulments so that they can be able to remarry and receive the sacraments. That is not something the church must do. The church works toward making all marriages valid and sacramental in order to help married couples help each other to attain their eternal salvation in heaven. It is true that several years ago, the Pope made some changes to the procedures in the annulment process to perhaps shorten the time it takes to come to a resolution to the petitions. Among those changes were the requirement for only one judgment of nullity without a mandatory review by a higher court, making the bishop a judge for certain straightforward cases which are able to be resolved by presentation of certain documentation and other procedural changes which shorten the process. None of these changes have to do with the grounds for annulment, which are founded in canon law. Remember what Jesus said, so they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. If a marriage is valid, it is an unbreakable bond which no one can break, not even the Pope himself. And divorcing from a valid marriage and remarrying puts the person in the sinful state of adultery as Jesus himself stated in today's gospel passage. The purpose of the annulment process is to decide if the marriage between two people is valid. There are conditions which, if found to exist at the time of the marriage, that's important, at the time of the marriage, invalidate the marriage, thus concluding that a marriage never existed. And here are some of the grounds. I'm just going to mention a couple. One of the most common is lack of form. All Catholics, whether practicing Catholics or not, are bound to have their marriage in a Catholic church with two witnesses and a, wit and a priest or deacon as the witness for the church. Anything differing from that scenario must have the dispensation from the bishop or it is not valid. There is another thing that I fear might have caused confusion in Father's homily, and that was about his mother. Sadly, as he told us, his father and mother divorced. He said his mother did not receive the Eucharist from that time on. But he did not say specifically that whether she had remarried or not. What I needed to emphasize to the people is that being divorced and not remarried is not an impediment to receiving the sacraments. This, unfortunately, is a very common mistaken belief. And I want to make sure that at least you all know what is real, what it, what's the real uh, fact. Father's mother may have been embarrassed in her culture by that condition. She wasn't from this country. But if she did not remarry, she was free to receive our Lord in Holy Communion. Or if she did remarry, she would have been free to take Holy Communion if she and her new husband were living as brother and sister, not participating in the marital act. If she had remarried and was enjoying the privileges of marriage, she would not be able to receive Communion, unless a decree of nullity was issued regarding her marriage to her father, to her father's father, her previous husband, in other words. 
The important thing has to do with conditions that were present at the time of the wedding. Anything that happens after a marriage, although perhaps grounds for separation or civil divorce, is not grounds for annulment. So, for instance, infidelity, as distressing as it is to the offended partner, is not a reason for an annulment to be granted. Many people mistakenly believe that it is. One other condition is that if it can be proved that at the time of the marriage, one of the parties believes that marriage would not be to believe marriage to not be exclusive, then in other words, that they could divorce if, if any problems came up, that would be grounds for annulment. Even under the distressing circumstances of infidelity, the church wishes and prays to be able to help the couple find forgiveness for each other, resolve the difficulty, and remain together for their sake and that of any children. You may have read about bishops' conferences in other parts of the Catholic world, where there are efforts to water down the teachings of the church regarding marriage. In Germany, the majority of bishops in that country are in favor of so-called same-sex marriage and of blessing homosexual unions. They have also proposed that people who are divorced and remarried without the benefit of annulment should be able to receive Holy Communion and also that members of other faiths, for instance, non that is non-Catholics, should be able to receive Holy Communion in the Catholic Church. And, despite the apostolic letter of Pope St. John Paul II, Ordinatio Sacerdotalis, in 1994, in which he declared definitively and infallibly that the Church has no authority to ordain women, nevertheless, there are still efforts on the part of some bishops and even some cardinals to move toward that. Dear people, those things are heresy. Regarding the validity of marriage, Bishop Joseph Strickland, in his Constitution on Teaching in 2017, wrote this. Because Christ desires that we be perfect, our ultimate goal is total marriage regularization in our diocese. To bring tangible form to this effort, it is my goal that we engage Every, each parishioner in an irregular marriage situation by the year 2020, and that each and every one of those situations be brought to canonical resolution by the end of 2025. His goal was to try to get everybody's marriage to be valid. <clears throat> there are many couples in our diocese and in our parish who are in irregular marriage situations whose marriages Bishop Strickland referred to in that quote from his document. He wanted, and Father Bolin and I do too, want to help all of those couples to be identified and helped in whatever way we can to have their marriages validated so that the couples can receive Holy Communion, be able to act as baptism and confirmation sponsors for their relatives and friends, and so on. So please, if you are in one of those situations, please contact us to see if we can help you. <clears throat>